Ignacio, first of all, uh, thank you for joining us today for this uh, session inside the, this uh, wonderful project, uh, the Kipling Balance. Um, it's an honor to have you as a guest today. We have known each other since many, many years ago. We have never worked in the same sector, but we have known each other since many years ago. And we have had many meetings in Madrid, in other cities, European cities. You have been the CEO of Iberdrola since the year 2001 and the chairman and CEO since 2006. It's impressive, the transformation of the company during all this period. And I'm sure we will have later the opportunity uh, to, to talk about it and, and to see what is more, more relevant for you about this transformation. Um, we have asked you to select one or two sections of this wonderful poem, If, which is so inspiring. It's very difficult, I'm sure, that when you were reading the poem, it was difficult for you to decide uh, which one uh, you were going to select. But uh, I would like to start our conversation talking about the first section that, that you have selected uh, regarding the poem. This section is, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. So I would like to start this conversation asking you what does this section mean for you and, and why do you think it is relevant in life, in management, in business? So thank you very much for having this opportunity. It's great to share all this uh, with you and with uh, all these uh, students. So uh, then when you are, uh, as, uh, you are becoming as older as myself, it's always a pleasure to share what we have already learned across our life with others we have already just in the beginning of the professional career. So I think I'm very glad to have this opportunity. So I think uh, this poem, I, I try to remember the first time I heard about, it was when I was, I think in the second year of the university in the, in the School of Engineers, you know, I'm electrical engineer with the Jesuit Ikari. And, uh, and, uh, and it was already a translation made by the father Jorge de la Cueva. Jorge de Acueda was the uncle of Julio Iglesias. He makes a special translation for his nephew in the day of his baptism. So I think, it's, uh, uh, I think that is the first time I heard about. And what, what did that, that means to, to me? So I think the first thing perhaps is that we are in life not for staying. We are in life for doing things. So and, and doing things means uh, uh, that... Uh, you have all time to try to be creative, to do things which have already beneficial for others. I think it's, uh, uh, something is very important is to have already self, uh, uh, sufficient, to be convinced of our capabilities and to have courage. So nothing in life is easy. So for those things in life, everything is already done, is not already, at least in my experience, is not certain. So the life is crisis, 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 with a small period with no crisis. So I think we have to be ready to manage crisis any time it happens. For that, you need to have faith in what you are doing. If you are not faith in what you are doing, you cannot transmit this, uh, your, your trust or your conviction to another one. So uh, the second thing is uh, uh, to try to make all the things in a manner will be messed so I think is uh, there are many people with nice words. There are not very many people with real facts. Perhaps because an engineer, so engineer means we need to deliver, mm. we need to, to touch something. But I think it's, it's very important to, 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 to make that one. And this, uh, and this uh, uh, poem is precisely transmitting this, this thing. I think you have to do things we had, uh, with, uh, with a sense of justice, with a sense of, of solidarity, with, uh, 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 and for that you need to require to work with, not to, to work alone, to, 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 to be able to generate teams uh, uh, and, and to make the right selection of those what you are working for that's, that one. That's and that is precisely what I, I did in Iberdrola. And I, I, when I went to Iberdrola, I think, as you mentioned many years ago, I think it's, when the, the, the company changed so much, it's not so many uh, because uh, of uh, 
great vision or great ideas is because the child is helping very much on that one. And I think when I joined the company, that's like one, Iberdrola was a traditional utility. It was one, one more. I think it was a small one, mm. only, uh, uh, Spain, uh, con uh, only with uh, 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 Spanish assets. So, uh, and uh, we were generating and producing electricity at most everybody with the coal and gas and oil, hydro, nuclear. And I think uh, we, uh, perhaps because my, my roads, I grew in a village, in a small village in the, in the western part of Spain, in Salamanca, and always I was very close to the, to the uh, uh, let's say, environment. And, uh, and, and second, I think I read something about Kyoto. Kyoto has already happened two or three years before. And Kyoto uh, gave to me some, something which was already very much in line with what I feel that things have to be done to protect the planet, to try to do things in a manner we will destroy as less as possible, producing and generating things which are already useful for the citizens. And we decide to, 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 to make the things in a different way. We saw then the carbonization and the energy transition, far from being a problem, is, it was a great opportunity. And I think that's why we, we decide to, we present a plan to the board. It was a very difficult son of the decision I mentioned to you before. That's why I'm wearing the green town time, because we decided to move from blue color to green color. Mm -hmm. So and that was very difficult to be approved. And that was, now when you look back, you think that that movement is symbolic, but was very well, relevant. Well, I think, I think the point, I think traditionally our color was blue because we have already hydroelectric. But I think they said, they, they said, well, okay, we agree to, to invest already in renewables. They don't know very much what that means in terms of wind, et cetera, et cetera. We understand that the coal is not the future. So I think they were very, but when we touch the, their, their own, let's say, traditions. Yeah. In traditions is already certain logo in certain color, that was harder. But I, I think they agree on that one. But I think since that, we've transformed completely the company. We have already, just in this moment, uh, uh, our emission is almost, in some countries, at zero. In Britain, is zero. In the United States, is almost zero. Uh, 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 in, in Brazil, is almost zero. In Spain, is less than 60 grams, 50 grams, something else. So we're more than 400 grams per kilowatt hour, which is our peers in Europe. And the company has really grew a lot in this, in this manner. So means we saw that some uh, thing uh, can be changed in, in some way. But for that, we need to convince not only the board, that was the yes. easiest part, even if it was difficult, is to try to change the mentality of thousands of people who have been traditionally doing the things in a manner to move another, another direction, even in some cases, suffering because of the closure of certain, uh, the shutdown of certain of the power plants. Hmm. Yes, I think you have touched uh, many different points and um, I would like later, but perhaps in a little moment in the conversation, because you were mention, mentioning this big transformation and what does it mean in terms of culture and the culture of the company. But before moving to that, Ignacio, I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, leadership uh, uh, in this uh, section of the poem. Uh, we are talking about self-confidence and at the same time being humble, being open to others, having different opinions. And then um, uh, when we think about uh, leading a team uh, and what, what are we looking for in the people working with us, leading other teams, being part of the team, what, what things uh, do, you, do, do, do you think are, are more relevant for you when you think about the, the management team of the, of the company? What are you looking for? Uh, how do you interact with them uh, as the CEO of the company? Um, what, how would you describe your, your leadership style and what you look for in the... I'm sure you are very demanding because you are very demanding with yourself. I know, because we have talked about this before, that you like very much the, the, what you think is a reference in life, the parable of talents. Uh, but what does this mean in terms of leading teams uh, for you? Uh, I would like to talk so a little bit. Thing, so the first thing is to believe that the, the, the companies are not just the assets. So a thing is to see, I used to say, that the most important part of uh, economical activity is the, is the person, the human being. So I dedicate a lot of time to stay with people, mm. to listen to people, 
to visit people. Probably I've been the CEO and the chairman of Iberdola in our 120 years history that has already traveled more all around the different assets. I know probably better the certain of my, uh, certain of my management of our power plants. Hmm. First, because I enjoy. I think it's not a sacrifice. I think when I'm fed up of being already just in the office looking paper balance sheet and, uh, and things like those ones, I enjoy to go to spend a day with uh, the employees of the power plant of Alcantara, to set one or to walk whatever, which I touch the reality. Yeah, I cannot one. agree more because so, I, for me, this has always, always been. And, uh, is, that is really relaxing yeah, for me. And it's also what you really enjoy. Yeah, yeah but at the same time, person. you listen a lot of things. Yeah. What these people uh, uh, can already tell you in a very, let's say, open atmosphere. So I think the first thing. The second one is, I, say, I said before, is to try to uh, be convinced about something, to try to transmit your conviction. I think you cannot lead people if you are not convinced about mm -hmm. what you are saying. So and you are already, uh, 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 and you can lead the people if the people see that you are coherent what you are saying, what you are doing. So when we say that we would like to fight against decarbonization, it's because we would like to fight the decarbonization. We are convinced about that one. Not only because it's a good business, it's because we are convinced that that is good for the planet, it's good for the people, it's good for the company as well. But I think to transmit with full conviction that that is like that. The third one is uh, to try to make the things uh, with truth. I think I know that probably the, the work to work with, the, with truth is not already very much in fashion. Hmm. But I think the truth is crucial. I think the people have to believe what you're saying is that is the truth and you are not lying anybody. And, and you respect the word what you are giving. Another thing which as well is very important. We've already made very many deals during those years. All my life I made very many. But always this shut hands and that shut hands is forever. I fully agree with that. So, I, have, I have personally I have said that also many times that, well, two things I would say that you can never lie in life or in business. If, if you start lying, this is the end of, 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 of everything. For me, that is... Uh, you are Jesuit as well. So. Yes, no, yes, but, but, <laughs> we are from the same. Yes, but that is absolute. <laughs> and, and the second thing is that, and this is very relevant also uh, in every aspect of life, that there are things which are right and things which are wrong. That in an era of uh, relativism, this is also something very, very relevant to have in mind. But sorry, go ahead, because no, I was no, asking no. you I about think, your leadership style. I think, leadership I think that style. those are the main things, is to have clear ideas, to transmit these ideas, to put already a methodology for uh, making that happen, and to measure the result, and to, uh, 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 rec to make the recognition, those ones which are making things correctly, mm. and to say, sorry, you are not already being as good as you. It's not only to say positive, but yeah. as well to correct if somebody is not doing the things correctly. But I think the honesty in the analysis, the honesty in the, uh, yeah. uh, let's say, evaluation and the And, the, and you look, for, when you think about your management team, when you think about the people around you, you, the qualities that you appreciate more are these qualities that you are mentioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certain effort. Effort. I, I think we put in our value very clear is effort, uh, capabilities, so the people have to be learning for life. Mm -hmm. Honestly, thin of thin spread and loyalty. Yeah, I think those are the values which I think is, uh, I showed to you before. Yeah, that is the chart yeah. we made 2001. From 2001, <laughs> with those which values. was blue still. Yes, <laughs> with these with these values. And about the parable of talents that I was mentioning. Well, I, I think is uh, I, I think perhaps I link with the first uh, words I mentioned. I think we are not here in, in life for staying; we are for doing. Mm. And doing means uh, that the parable of talents. So I think God give us certain capabilities, uh, certain uh, capabilities, and certain opportunities. And we have to live this word, not only delivering what being we received, but we have to pay some interest for that. So I think. We have to create, we have to share, and we have to share even more than we have received. Mm -hmm. 
Very good. And uh, coming back to what I was saying before, Ignacio, we were talking, I was mentioning that later we were going to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about culture. Uh, in any company, in any organization, this is extremely relevant. It's also sometimes very challenging because, uh, when, when, for example, in, in your case that you have grown in many different countries, you have acquired companies also in many different countries, how do you manage to have a single culture? It's, of course, diverse, because diversity is something that is very positive for, for every company and, and it enriches the company. But uh, how, do, because when you have, when there is a company in which everything is organic growth, probably it, it's never easy not to keep the culture of the company when you grow, but it's less challenging than when, when you are combining acquisitions with organic growth in many different countries. And, and then, of course, for every company, it's very relevant to have a single culture, not a different culture in the different markets in which uh, it is uh, uh, it has operations. So, uh, how are you dealing yeah, with that? Perhaps because Iberdrola is the result of uh, mergers. Yes. Iberdrola is a 120 years old company. Uh, it's uh, the consequence of mergers, of mergers and mergers. So, I think the last merger was. Hidroelectrica Española, who is located in Madrid in Valencia, on the central east of Spain, and uh, in the north uh, and the west, which is Iberduero. But before that was a very many another media. So the culture of uh, integration, of uh, uh, different mentalities, uh, different behaviors, different technologies. So I think it's part of our, of our culture. So what, what we did? So trying to apply the, the knowledge we have already learned during, during the, the last 100 years. And for that, we uh, means traveling, 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 talking with people, talking with people, talking with people, exchanging people. We have already a special integration team where they are moving there. And they are already taking British uh, to Spain, Spanish to America, mm. American, to mix all this one, to stay uh, mixing each other, and trying again and again to try to convince to the, let's say, newcomers what is our vision, what is our target, what is our strategy, why is that is our vision, why that is our strategy, what we are expecting for them, who is going to make what for when. So all those things, and that is, I think, for years, and I think I continue, now it's much easier than before. For years, I was already just having meetings like those one, with uh, hundreds of thousands of employees from different uh, uh, areas of different countries. Talking about the company, talking, talking about the challenges, asking hour, questions. During one hour they speak, asking and during them. another hour they speak, and they ask whatever, whatever they would they like, wanted. I reply as much. Now it's much easier because instead of 100 or 500 yeah, yeah, people, now it's telematic. I can make telematic, I meet already yeah, 10,000 yeah. or 15,000, but as well they can make whatever questions. It is true that technology has, uh, for every company, of course, technology has many implications uh, all across our lives and business. But uh, in terms of internal communication, it is an incredible tool. In terms of transmitting the company to the to, to all the employees inside the company to have this type of... I have, I have had many, many telematic meetings like this in which you can have 5,000 people at the same time and asking questions and everybody leaving the it, it is it is unbelievable how how helpful uh, this has been but i wanted to move uh, back to something yeah you... but let me something on yeah. that one perhaps because i'm from the analog generation yeah i because i'm the analog generation i absolutely we are using these digital tools but yeah you can i never, need to touch people of course of course i need to touch people you can so never... i think when you touch people, I think the transmission yes. of the things are absolutely different. And, all, and also, uh, when you touch people, uh, not only in formal meetings, but also informally. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I always have liked very much yeah. uh, moving around yeah. and then without any agenda, absolutely. meeting people and talking absolutely. about absolutely. Uh, different yeah. things. And, and uh, another question about lo your leadership style. Uh, how do you see... Um, how do you interact, uh, of course, probably it's a combination, no? but how do you interact uh, most often with, with your teams? It's uh, through formal meetings, many informal meetings. Are you very, I don't know how to say, um, do you respect uh, very much the, 
the organization of the company, the different levels, or, or you like to have the direct contact with the person mm -hmm. who is really uh, the responsible I think of both things. Both things. I think we have already very formal meetings every Monday morning with our operation committee, yeah. in which we share the main issues of the group. Yes. And uh, we, let's say, uh, hear what happened in any part of the group, or we take decisions which correspond to ourselves. Of course, we have the executive committee in the board, the board meeting, but I think in terms of management, that is a formal meeting every Monday. Everybody knows that whatever mm -hmm. decision we need to be taken is taken. Mm -hmm. So I think that's... And this one is very executive. That is executive every Monday morning, 10.30, mm -hmm. meeting of that one. So I think that... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also in very many formal. Many informal. Where, and I think, I, I, I would respect the structure, of course. I think I, I, I distinguish the difference between dispatching yeah. and hearing. I think I like to listen for whatever would like to say me anything. And I ask the people. But another thing is the instructions are given through the line. So I think we have to do something. So the boss has to say that one. I'm not saying to, to jump in the, the structure. No, but. Here, yeah. that one, and we receive a lot of input for whatever levels in the company. I always have made the distinction. Um, I don't know if, the, if it is the best way to say this in English. Is well, in Spanish we say puentear, so it would be yeah. jumping. You were saying or bridging. I don't know yeah. what is the best word, but I have always made the distinction between healthy and unhealthy uh, bridging or yeah. jumping. Yeah. I have always practiced what I consider healthy jumping, and it is a to respect who has to take the decision, but not to be always, uh, you were, you, it's very similar to what you were saying, hearing, but this is different than deciding something without the direct uh, boss being involved, no? no. So it is No, also, have, so also I, I, in a moment, if there are somebody which I'm talking about whatever thing, and they're feeling that they, are, they have some, they need some kind of uh, help or decision or whatever, Normally, I, I live from there, I talk, whatever, and I phone mm -hmm. to his boss saying, well, you have to do this and this and this, with this and this and this. But I try for all, for all means to respect this. The, and I the, have had also, Ignacio, many times, uh, probably it has happened to you, a phone call that whenever it happened, I was liking it very much. And it is somebody calling me and telling me, Pablo, I am thinking to do this, but before doing it, I would like to know your opinion. This means for me that my opinion is valuable for this person, but that he knows that the decision belongs to him. So yeah. he is not asking me to take the decision. But when you receive this phone call, is that uh, this is a call that I always have liked very much. I'm not very many of those. No. No, not very many of those. I think we are. Uh, uh, you are already a lawyer and engineer, so. You are more humanist on that okay. one. We are more room. Think. Yeah, so it's more fact-driven. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but I think I think is uh, first they know if they have to take a decision, they have to take a decision, but they're already a way where the decision is taken, yeah. which is operation committee, if it's something which is uh, uh, exceeding their, 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 their powers. So uh, uh, that's why I think if somebody would like to take that one, that is different when you are visiting, and that might refer yes. to that one, when you're in a visit, informal visit, whatever. So they are talking to you, they say to you, and we have to be very careful because in the conversation you can say things that can be interpreted yes, by you yourself need to be very that careful. you have instructed something. And that's why when I think that one, if I feel that something like that is happened, I don't like that he used that saying, the chairman has yeah, already told yeah, me that, yes. and I phoned rapidly before that happened, to his boss saying, be aware that, chi, chi, chi. Yeah, that is, yes, I, I completely agree with you. And that is, there are many, ex these informal conversations, which are extremely useful yeah. and valuable, but at the same time, they have a risk. I completely yeah. agree with you. And there are many examples in history, not talking about companies, in which this type of informal conversations have led even to wars. Yeah. in history. So yeah. it is very, very delicate, yeah. this type of informal conversations, what to say, what not to say. But at the same time, inside a company, of course, it's, uh, it's uh, completely essential. And how are you, Ignacio, when, I don't know how to say, when there is somebody inside your team that has taken a risk and it has been a significant mistake? How do you react uh, to that? So uh, uh, perhaps the first thing, uh, and I think you are already as well, 
Jesuit background like myself. So I, I think I, I, I have some my professor in the, in the university. Uh, they told me that uh, uh, if you would like to lead a good organization, the mistakes are not the mistakes of your people, it's your mistakes. Your mistakes. Your mistakes. And your success are not your success, it's the success of our team. And I think when you are already, you are internalized, such a behavior, such. So I think it's when somebody is making a mistake with good faith. Yes. So I think it distinguishes. And not good too faith, many, because if there are too many, I then think, it's another. Well, I, but the, <laughs> that is another thing. I think it's, but I think if somebody makes something which I think is wrong. Mm. So, but he, he makes that with his best knowledge and with a good faith for making that in a positive thing for the company. So I, I use precisely the opposite. Don't worry, take care, go ahead, we will solve that one. And I put all the service, all the, the service of the company to help himself to, to, to already to minimize the effect of this decision. It's different if he's taking this decision because he would like to work less, yes. because he's not studied properly, which is not really made in a professional manner, or, or because he has some in personal interest on that. Yes, of course. So this would I, be think, a I think I think is, uh, I think that is a much harder treatment on mm. that one. But but I think that that's normal. I think when you are making many things, so things yes. work fine. Sometimes not. I think this is key so, in, in every company to have this culture because if not, nobody takes decisions. So, so if everybody is it, afraid, I can tell you. For instance, probably in this moment, we have already. 50 or 60 uh, uh, solar or, or, or wind power plant in construction. Probably a few of them, they are already make things wrong in the design, in the construction, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, estimate of, of wind or, or resource or whatever. Fine, well, but, but I think they had already done with the best thing we cannot criticize. I think it's, it's a basket in which at the end, yeah. The result is good, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, I but think, I think not, uh, you mentioned, if somebody is systematically making things wrong, in that case, probably the problem is, is my own. Yes. Because I not already have nominated that one for this position. Yeah. So, and, and, and at the same time, it's key to be very demanding. Because yeah. in a company, so it, this, this is, in my, in my opinion, these are the type of difficult things to balance when you are leading an organization because you need to combine being very demanding with at the same time what you were saying right now. If there is a mistake, it is uh, our mistake. It is, but but keeping this idea of being very demanding because yeah. there are many companies in which you see that as soon as things start to relax, then this could mean the end for the company. You need yeah, to be yeah, very yeah. demanding, and yeah, yeah. so it's to combine these two things, which yeah. uh, I think is is very. We have important. certain tension. Yeah, there's certain tension, which is which is key. I would like Ignacio now to move a little bit to a more global topic, which I think is very interesting for everybody, and, we, and in which Ibertrola has been a pioneer since many years ago, and it is everything related with energy transition, uh, with climate uh, change. This is um, a little bit different from what we are talking right now about uh, leadership, about management. But I think it could be very interesting to, 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 to hear your view. How do you think as a, a, the world, do you think we are doing enough? Do you think we should be doing more? Do, do you think we are taking globally the right decisions? I know that inside this very general concept about taking the right decisions, I'm sure not everything is right in your opinion, but globally, do you think we are in the, in the good path thinking about uh, climate change, energy transition? Well, uh, when uh, 23 years ago, we started already generating green electricity, uh, our colleagues said that we are absolutely, our colleagues, investors, uh, politicians, uh, whatever, said we are crazy that the wind never blow when it's needed. So that was the same use in one of our, uh, one of our uh, competitors' uh, general assembly. So uh, if our dollar is wrong because we never blow when it's needed, well, it's true. Uh, it's, uh, but it, it blows, it means it generates electricity, and during the time it generates electricity, it's not burning coal, so which I think 
But I think uh, 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 we had already uh, suffered a situation during these years in which very many people were denying that the problem exists. I think we were pioneers trying to defend a green flag, saying that the thing has to be made in different manner, trying to convince investors, uh, politicians, regulators, competitors, and I have to say that probably the citizens are more open mind. I think we, est we est make already in this country in the 2003, 2004, a special tariff, green tariff for electricity, and citizens were ready, customers were ready to pay for it. But our uh, competitors denounce ourselves and the regulator stop. Then we can continue already selling this because they say the electricity which flow into the grid has no different color, so which I think is not true because you are, you are certifying the origin of that yeah. one. But I think these deniers, uh, they move slowly, we're moving to, uh, especially after Paris, uh, COP of Paris, the COP 24, COP 23. So, uh, which uh, I think the civil society were pushing uh, politicians, regulators, uh, 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 governments. And now you think we are doing enough? Well, I think they push, and very many people, they, they, they deny us who are diminishing. But in, the, in this moment appear what they call delays. Said, well, we are not denying, but we need time for that. We need time delay. And now they are moving uh, to another, let's say, casta or group of people which are not denied because it's impossible to deny that the problem exists. They are, I think they need already to say that they are ready to do things, so, so they are delaying as much as they can, but they are already applying a more intelligent approach, which is the greenwashing. We are doing things as well, our whatever is, uh, is not making a reality, it's just nice words. So if you see, uh, 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 and, and I think that that is the situation, saying that, Saying that, I think the times is much better. So I think certain of our, let's say, enemies uh, is becoming our competitors, so, which I think that's, that's mm -hmm. great. So I think I prefer competitors than enemies. So uh, we, are, not, uh, we are, are doing the things at the enough speed. The answer is no. But I'm optimistic. The are thing optimistic. is, uh, the COP28 in Dubai, I was already there. I've been attending the different COPs in Copenhagen so many years mm -hmm. ago. And, uh, and I think uh, everybody was thinking that it's going to be a disaster. And I think thanks, among others, of the leadership of the Sultan al Jaber, which is the, the Minister of Energy of uh, Dubai and the President of the Oil Company of, of Dubai as well. So uh, it has already made certain, certain good achievements. The fact 110 countries has already uh, agreed to triple investment in renewables up to 2030. So you think we are in the right direction? Uh, we are in the right, direction, not at the speed but not as at the needed, speed. but uh, I think we are, uh, we are moving. What I have seen, and you for sure, we have been together many years at the European Roundtable of Industrialists. And I was this, fighting against our colleagues. No yes, but, but what, I, what I have seen there from all the, this is, all these around a little bit more than 50 big European industrial companies, a, a, some of the biggest industrial companies in, in Europe. Um, what I can say is that there is very, in general, very sincere commitment from companies yeah. to go in every sector. Eh? I'm not talking about uh, energy companies, but in every sector, there is a strong conviction from, from, from every company. Well, this is what well I, I think precisely that is what you're saying is absolutely true. I remember the first meetings in, uh, uh, in YRT in the Energy uh, Committee, mm. led it by uh, uh, initially oil company, afterward a semen company. Yeah. I think it was terrific fight on that one. And now all we, the 50, yes, 55 the 50. companies, yeah. we had already made a document supporting the fit for 55 of the European Union, the decarbonization programs yes, of the I European Union, is... all we subscribe, yeah. all we support. Yes. So which I think that is, that, that's why I'm I think optimistic. there is a strong conviction. And that I'm optimistic to... for that. I think the, the, uh, the, the, the change in mind of uh, 
the leadership, the leaders of the main companies is changed, yes. perhaps because of the social pressure, because of the environment, because of conviction, because whatever. But that is, that I, is positive. Saying that, we have to move faster. Okay. And we have to be coherent, not always policies in the countries are coherent. Mm -hmm. Are saying something and do it the opposite. I think uh, electrification for decarbonization is the solution. Yes. It's not a problem. And I think sometimes those which are already trying to decarbonize or doing their best, investing for decarbonization, are penalized in favor of those which are just doing the opposite. So I think this, because you know, uh, you, 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 you knew very well as myself, uh, by President Timmerman. Yes. So by President Timmerman, I remember one of those panels I was attending with him. He was saying that sometimes the, the we, the time for businessmen, are absolutely different than the times of police, uh, of, of police makers. The police makers or the government's timing is the, the next election. When is there going to be the next election? That's a long, long term. For us, it's the life of the asset. Perhaps that is already making that one. So we are, what we are taking decisions yes. for long term uh, are seeing that we have to change the thing. Sometimes the wife take the decision for tomorrow, so mm -hmm. they are already more concerned about the tomorrow problem than for the long term, uh, long -term. program. And Ignacio, coming back now to a little bit more personal uh, things and related with uh, leadership. I would like uh, to talk uh, to you a little bit if there are any mentors, leaders that have had an influence in your life or who, or who you have admired. For example, in my case, if I can share it with you, uh, not only, but I tend to admire very much the founders, people who found uh, things from zero, I could mention several of them. Uh, well, there is one that I know quite well, who is Amancio Ortega, of course, or How Howard Schultz, the founder of, of Starbucks, or I don't know, Steve Jobs, who I never met, the other two I... But of course, also CEOs that transform companies is something that, that you need a long tenure to transform a company. Uh, uh, it's also something I admire very much. Uh, do you have any mentors, leaders that have been relevant in your professional life or that you admire or that you have been, or, or not in the business, but, but leaders, world leaders that, that, that you have admired because of what they did? So, and... uh, uh, well, perhaps on my, on my times of the university, uh, I had already a professor who was uh, Padre Lequerica, was professor of uh, electrotecnia which uh, he was quite old at that time. And I think, but he was very open mind. And I think it's a, a quite a close relation with him on, during this time. But after being retired, when he was retired, and they, I was already just uh, teaching in the school, I was professor of, his, of his strength of material in the UK. I saw himself just with a piece of paper of computing, somebody with 80 something, said, Father Lecarica, where do you go with that? said, well, you cannot expect an engineer in this time will not already have big knowledge enough of computing. So I think this open mind, open mind yes. this open mind of somebody which you have to be learning all your life, he just uh, has already put influence myself. I think this spirit of learning and learning, learning and learning. And the second, I think I have two persons. One, we was in my first job. We was Antonio Sade Montagut. He was the chairman of uh, Tudor, the mm -hmm. company what I started work for, which uh, I think he was as well engineer of Vicai. And, uh, and uh, I was uh, his young engineer, so uh, he was treated like his uh, son, which showed to me a lot of things, how to uh, manage the business and how to manage the life in many things. And the third one is, is recently died, Jose Ignacio Berrueta. He was... Uh, the, the, the chairman of uh, the president of uh, BBK, the, the bank, not, not the, the, yes. the saving bank of the country was. He was already a pioneer. He was the mayor of uh, different saving banks. And uh, he has been with me in the board. He was in the board of Iberdrola before I joined in Iberdrola. He is, uh, but uh, I, he was, in my, in, in, I was, he was. These are me. people that have had a strong influence Really, on you really, about... both, uh, all these three has already uh, treat in different manner. So one criticizing the last one, the another one showing, and the first one giving me already uh, 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 ideas about uh, the future. And about your personal um, habits, uh, Ignacio, 
Uh, how is a normal day in your life? You wake up very early, you exercise or not, you have plenty of meetings during the day. I know you are traveling probably 40 or 50 percent of your time, so it's very difficult to say what is a normal day in your life. Do you take time just to think? It was Bill Gates who was saying about this thinking week, to take one week to think, which I think is impossible. But uh, how how is your... So, uh... I, I think I work hard. I know you like to walk because we have met yes, sometimes yeah. <laughs> in the past. I work hard. Yeah. So I think I have not to say those which says that uh, uh, my my journey finished at that time. My no. journey finished when it finished. I work very many hours, uh, included. Uh, I try to rest one day in the weekends, uh, which I... Uh, I said, today is nothing to do, but Sundays I stay working the whole day. Well, I, 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 in my case, it's the same. I have never <coughs> worked on Saturdays, only if there is something, I don't know. Yeah. But Sundays I have, yeah. during my whole life, preparing I the prepare, week. I, and then, I think my, my chief of staff suffer myself. Yes. because I know No, but you have the feeling on Monday that you are ahead of events. Yeah. If you yeah. have been working yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. And, and thinking, uh, I think, uh, well, when you are at the head of a company, your brain has to be work, working 24 hours a day, mm. so seven days a week, so you are all time on that one. When I need already to take hard decisions, sometimes you need to take hard decisions. Normally, uh, perhaps of the years I've been living in Germany, so makes that I need to pass a night. Yes. So, and in some cases, even I need to consult with my horse. So one of my hobbies is riding horses in my, in my, my property, in my ranch. So I have some horses and I go there, I, I, I yes, I, I take a horse. And you are, because you can already, uh, you are not looking where you're walking. So I, I think know. the, the And the it horse, is much better to take decisions in the morning than at night. I think this I, I is, need open space yes, to take decisions. I, mean, I cannot take, I cannot take decision. Yes, uh, I need to and open you space. Sleep well. you know, oh yes, very well. Yeah. That's too well, key. I'm jealous, and no, my wife is jealous of me. No, that's key. <laughs> You're horrible. <laughs> I think that that that's key to sleep yeah. well yeah. and to really rest, yeah. and then to, yeah. to and you exercise a lot, Ignacio. Or? So if I can, I walk. Okay? Yeah. And uh, during weekends, I ride horses or like my bike. I, I like very much bike, as well. And uh, and, and that's it. So and I now and recently, I'm already just. Uh, trying to go for Pilates, yes. and uh, I pay already fees, but it's, I'm not going. It's, it's, it's great. Eh? I yeah, can recommend Pilates I, I, to you. Yeah, but I, I never had time. So. Is, uh, I, I was going to say it's an essential part of my life, Pilates, yeah, I, since I, 10 years ago. I it's think great. my secretary is convincing me, So, but uh, I think it's, uh, I, I try to go. But, but the only possibility is at home, early in the morning, in oh. your home. But is, I, I don't stay at home. So oh, it's, okay. it's, it's, uh, I'm traveling now a bit less, but I've been traveling for uh, 150, mm. uh, 170 years, uh, days a year. It's yeah. impossible. And Ignacio, I would like, we could keep uh, stay talking and talking for, for hours, but uh, I would like, uh, before concluding this conversation, as far as we are here at IE University with lots of uh, students, I would like to ask you for an advice that you would have liked to be given to you, or perhaps that it was even given to you when you were a university a student, what advice would you, uh, what would you say to young students about their lives, their professional lives? What would be your advice to young students? The first is uh, hard work. Nobody is going to give them nothing for free. They need to gain whatever they achieve. So we're hard. The second is to have faith in themselves, to uh, keep all across the life. They can already work in different places with different technologies, different uh, areas, etc. But they have to keep certain values. So uh, the values of the truth, the values of the sense of justice, the values of uh, 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 learn from mistakes, the, uh, to be already uh, uh, loyalty, so this one. And the, and the, and the third one is that uh, 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 they have to be innovative. So I think that one which this Father Lecarica transmitted to me, that uh, the university is the first step, but I think is they learn 
we learn enough in the university for continued learning. So I think if some things then because they just got just a degree or the master or whatever, that the life is done, they are absolutely wrong. I think that is the first day to start learning for being able to start producing and to start to creating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But nothing is going to be given to them by free. Hard work, working with another one, sharing uh, to create things and to share with another one with uh, uh, whatever they have already been receiving. So thank you very much, Ignacio. It has been a, an honor and a great pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you very much, Ignacio. Thank you.